Hello friends, this video on organisms and their surroundings part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now discuss about the next habitat that is grasslands. Grassland, as the name suggests, areas dominated by grasses. That is why we call them grasslands. Now, it is not really necessary that grasslands can only have grasses. grasses. Of course, they have, they support vegetation and this vegetation can vary from very short, like very short height uh, vegetation like grasses to quite tall trees as well. Now, due to the presence of so many trees and plants, a variety of animals also live in the grasslands, like a huge variety of birds, animals, insects, they do live there. Again, huge varieties of plants are also there out of which grasses are the dominant ones. Trees and large shrubs are mostly absent, but yes, they can also be present. In fact, that's why the name is grassland because mostly they are covered with grasses. Now, there exist many different types of grasslands. So, we have something called tropical grasslands. We have something called as temperate grasslands. So these are all different types of grasslands. Now tropical grasslands, they mostly have scattered individual trees. So individual trees scattered over a huge stretch of land. Whereas in temperate grasslands, you mostly have grasses as the dominant vegetation. So you know, there are these kind of uh, grasslands, either tropical or temperate, they are located in different parts of the world depending and they also have different climatic conditions. Now, when we talk about grasslands, it becomes very important to mention about forests because forests, I would not say that forests are exactly the same as grasslands, but forests and grasslands, they have the similarity in the sense that both of them support vegetation. Both of them support the growth of plants, but in forests, you mostly have huge tall trees. So forests are like entirely covered with plants and trees. Now, because of the presence of so many plants, there is uh, enough food available, there is enough water available, there is decent amount of rainfall and all these factors help the animals to survive in the forest and therefore forests are home to a huge variety of animals whether you talk about their elephants, giraffe, lions, tigers, monkeys or you talk about birds or insects. So all of them live very comfortably in forests. Now, in forests, when you think of the animals who live in the forest, why do they live in forest? Because animals get protection in the forest. Now, when we talk about protection, uh, you might ask that, okay, how do we know that animals get are protected in forest? Because we see that there are animals which eat up other animals, like a tiger eats up a deer. So, how do we say that the deer is protected in a forest? Well, that's because so everywhere, wherever you talk about any animal, you will always have certain section of organisms who would be predators. That is, they would exploit other animals. They would kill and eat other animals. And there would also be prey. That is, those animals who will be eaten up by the predator. So you will always have the predators and the prey. So they will always be there. So the animal who hunts is a predator. Like in this case, the tiger is the predator and the prey is the deer. So predators and prey will be there everywhere. But when you look at a forest, there are certain advantages for the deer also to stay in the forest. That's because what do the deer eat? The deer mainly feeds on the plant, plant parts. Now there are a huge number of plants present in the forest. So there is abundance of food for the deer. But yes, there is a risk that other animals might eat the deer. But the possibility of protecting itself from the predators are also high in forest. So we will see how a deer can protect itself from the predator. So not only this example, you can think of other examples where uh, the reptiles which eat on tiny insects. So there also you have the predator-prey relationship. This is the predator and this is the prey. So let us see how animals are protected in forests. Now when you look at this relation where you have a tiger and you have a deer. So how, what are the adaptations for the tiger and what are the adaptations for the deer? Now, every animal tries to protect itself from the predator because it doesn't want to get hunted and doesn't want to get killed and eaten by somebody else. So, when you look at this tiger, what is its aim? Its aim is to catch a prey and eat it up. 
So for that, it has certain adaptations within its body. For example, it has sharp teeth and its sharp teeth helps to tear the flesh of other animals. It has strong claws. So these claws help to catch the animal. So it can, it gives the tiger or lion a better grip to catch the other animal. The location of the eyes. Now when you look at the tiger, the eyes are located in front of the face. So it, it helps them to locate the prey correctly. So when, when the animal has eyes in front of the face, you can see the front view very clearly. So that helps him to locate the prey. Now let us see what are the adaptations that a deer has so that it helps the deer. The deer is a fast runner. So being a fast runner, it can escape from predators very quickly. Strong teeth. Now strong teeth help them to chew plant parts because as I said the deer are herbivores that is they mostly feed on plants. So chewing the plant parts it needs some strength so their strong teeth helps in that. Long ears. These long ears are like very you know sensible so they can hear even the slightest sound. So this helps them to uh, understand the foods, footstep of predators. So let's say if there is a lion coming towards the deer, so the deer will be able to uh, hear the footstep quite well in advance because of its long ears. Eyes, if you look at the eyes of the deer, the eyes are located on the sides of the face. So they are not on the front of the face like the tiger or the lion, they are located on the sides of the face. Now these location help them to look in all directions. So when the eyes are located on the sides, the deer can very well look at the entire right hand side. It can also look at the entire left hand side. So that means it gets a wider view. So it can look in all directions. So you see both these animals have their own adaptations to live in the forest. Now the advantage of forest is that now forest is very rich in resources. If the abiotic factors in forest are perfectly, are very perfect for the survival of other animals. Like right? you have huge amount of water, you have huge number of trees, you have very good supply of oxygen. So all these factors, the, the soil fertility is also very high which supports growth of most of the plants. So that means all these factors encourage a lot of animals to live in forests. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.